Yellowstone supervolcano update. Geyser's eighth eruption in three months has scientists concerned. They mark it as an overactivity. Sean Martin of Express UK reports. This is an article from 11 hours ago. Yellowstone supervolcano. Its largest geyser has erupted for the eighth time in three months and has scientists worried as they speculate over the cause of such frequent eruptions. Steamboat geyser roared back to life last April with its first triple eruption in the past 15 years. And that's what caused the interest in the scientific community. Currently, the scientists are reporting that it has blown at least eight times in the last three months, and they are fearful that there is a dangerous activity beneath the surface of the United States' most catastrophic volcano because it is a supervolcano. Well, it's not the only supervolcano in the United States. We also have the Long Valley volcano in California, that is not far from the large supervolcanic Yellowstone size, but even bigger than all of these supervolcanoes is the Wawa Spring supervolcano, which is a, a volcanic eruption index of over 10, whereas Ye Yellowstone has a volcanic VEI index of about eight. So we have a number of supervolcanoes in the same area. Yellowstone is in Montana. Wawa Springs is just south of that in Utah. And then we have the Long Valley volcano, which is in California. So all of them are basically in the same area surrounding the areas of the new land formation around the Rockies. Geysers like Old Faithful and Steamboat erupt whenever water and steam is trapped in the tight spot below the geyser's blowhole. The mix of water and steam builds the pressure until it finds its way to the surface where a tall stream of scorching hot water blasts hundreds of feet into the sky. And this is the geyser blowing. Scientists from USGS and the University of Utah that have been situated and monitoring Yellowstone area in the past few months to study the action of the geysers. Well, the research there says that uh, they're wondering why these geysers are so active right now, and they want to find out whether these are warning signs of a new Yellowstone eruption. But they also come to say that chances may be limited. While Norris Geyser Basin, the area where Steamboat is located is active right now, it could shut down at any moment. Jamie Farrell, who is a geologist at the University of Utah, states it's one of the most dynamic areas in Yellowstone and it's always changing. This is a reality, a really exciting time for Norris Geyser Basin and we don't know how long it's going to last. When it shuts down, it may shut down for years. Well, scientists and experts continue to analyze the geysers because they want to ascertain if they can indicate any sort of impending eruption for Yellowstone. Of course, there is deformation and swelling of the surface, the ground, showing that there is activity going on underneath. If the Wyoming volcano were to erupt, an estimated 87,000 people would lose their lives immediately because they would be in Zone 1, and two-thirds of the United States would immediately be made uninhabitable due to the uh, ash covering the earth of the area. Now, the largest spew of ash into the atmosphere would block out sunlight, and it would directly affect life beneath it, creating a volcanic winter, a nuclear winter blocking out the sun. The uh, We're not going into, of course, the effects of what it would have to do with the loss of electricity, and anything having to do with the destruction and damage coming from uh, uh, nuclear power plants in the area, that's another issue altogether. But this, as a natural disaster, is uh, mind-boggling. The massive eruption could be 
a staggering 6,000 times as powerful as the one from Washington's Mount St. Helens that took place in 1980. That killed 57 people. And it also deposited ash in 11 different states and also five Canadian provinces. So if the supervolcano of Yellowstone does erupt and explode, the climate shift would ensue as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere and that would act as a form of a sulfur aerosol that would reflect and absorb sunlight.